Principal component analysis is a method mainly used for dimensionality reduction or to normalize some data. So let's consider a data cloud that looks like this. If you want to reduce dimensionality of that data, so right now it's two-dimensional. If you want to reduce dimensionality, it would be good to project this data onto this line. Now in 2D it's quite easy to see what the optimal projection is, but in higher dimension it is not. So we need some mathematical tools to figure out these dimensions along which the data is most has its most extent, so has greatest variance, so that you are able to ignore the other dimensions where the data distribution has only little variance. In order to do so, we need the second moment matrix or covariance matrix, as it is often called, and that's defined as x1 times x1 averaged, x1 times x2 averaged, x2 times x2 averaged, sorry, x1 x2 times x1 and x2 times x2. So, um, so this is strictly speaking a second moment matrix, but if the data has zero mean, like this one here, then it's actually identical to the covariance matrix. So the covariance matrix truly would have components like x1 minus x1 average times x2 minus x2 average. So that would be um, the true covariance. Well, this here is the second moment matrix. However, usually in PCA one first removes the mean and then second moments and covariances are identical. Okay, so how can we interpret these? This here only depends on x1, so it makes a statement about x1, which is here, and this is x2. And this tells us something about the spread in this direction. It's actually the variance of the data in this direction, assuming zero mean data. This here is the variance in this direction, assuming zero mean data. So for this particular data distribution, we see that the variance is the same in these two directions, so we would expect identical values on the diagonal. Now, the off-diagonal elements are related to correlation. So they somehow express um, how x1 and x2 are related to each other. They are related to the correlation if they were normalized like the variance plus divided by the, um, like the normalized like the covariance and uh, divided by the variance. So it's a sort of unnormalized correlation if you like. But it shares with the correlation the fact that that it is positive if the data is positively correlated and negative if the data is negatively correlated. And we see this, uh, we can understand this by seeing that all these data points have a positive x1 and a positive x2. So if you multiply these two values to get a positive contribution, right? while these data points and these two quadrants give a negative contribution, you multiply a negative value with a positive value. And these also again give a 
positive contribution because you multiply two negative numbers. So if most of the points lie in these two quadrants, you get a positive value. If most of the points like lie in these two quadrants, you get a negative value. Or more specifically, it's not the number of points, it's the total value that you get by multiplying the value. So if you have points that lie way out here, of course they contribute more than points close to the center. But it's for intuition, it's helpful to remember that this is a positive quadrant, this is a positive quadrant, this is a negative quadrant, and this also is a negative quadrant. Okay. So here now, we would assume that this matrix, this matrix should have positive values here and identical values here. Now, it's also clear that, I mean, there are also some constraints. I mean, these values cannot be arbitrarily large because they are constrained by these two values, right? So this one, if these two are identical, these values cannot be larger than these ones. They can be equal, but they cannot be larger. So there are some constraints. So for this concrete distribution, a reasonable covariance ma matrix might be 2, 2, 1, 1. For instance. Yeah? So in order to find the principal directions of the distribution, we have to calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this second moment matrix. And that's not so easy to see with this more with this somewhat general covariance matrix. But if you look, if you pretend we have a second moment matrix that's diagonal, and now let's take two, four, zero zero here. Yeah. That would be correspond to a distribution that looks like like follows. So we see first of all that the variance in the x one direction is smaller than in the x two direction. It's actually half as half as large. That means the distribution is square root of 2 smaller. Right? You remember probably that the variance is a square of the standard deviation, so therefore if the, sta if the variance differs by a factor of 2, the standard deviation differs by a factor of square root of 2. So that's one thing. And we see from the zeros here that the data is not correlated. So the distribution would look something like this. Right, so this is again x1, x2. So this is again the data distribution and the second moment matrix. Now what are the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of this matrix? Now to remind you, the eigenvector uh, the eigenvalue equation looks like this. So if no, let's take C, that's the typical letter for the second moment matrix. C times eigenvector A equals lambda times A. And there's actually an I to it because there are several different eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So an eigenvector for a matrix is the vector that if you multiply it with a matrix it just gets scaled by a factor. And for this matrix the eigenvectors are very easy to calculate and also the eigenvalues. It's simply 1, 0 and 0, 1. It's easy to verify that if you multiply this vector with this matrix, you get the same vector just scaled by the eigenvalue. And the eigenvalue here is 
would be 2 and 4. Now, eigenvectors, if we draw the eigenvectors into this graph, we see that they point exactly in the direction, in the principal direction of the distribution. So, and this first one has the eigenvalue, has the eigenvalue, no, this actually has the eigenvalue. So, and the first one has the eigenvalue 2, and the second one has the eigenvalue 4. Now this is an interesting relationship. So we see we have the distribution shown in blue and that gives rise to the second moment matrix. We then calculate so we go from the data distribution. So this now is an interesting relationship. So from the data distribution we calculate the second moment matrix. From the second moment matrix, we infer the eigenvectors and eigenvalues. And if you draw the eigenvectors and eigenvalues into this graph, they happen to be exactly the principal axes of this distribution. And the eigenvalues correspond to the variances of the distribution. And this relationship between distribution, second moment matrix, and eigenvectors also holds in this case. You know, so if we draw it in there, we find the first eigenvector goes in points in this direction, the second eigenvector points in this direction. If we are now goes and looks at the eigenvalues, one gets some interesting information about the distribution from that. So if we would plot the spectrum of eigenvalues, so this is the number of the eigenvalue and this is the eigenvalue. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, etc. So and that might look like this, one point there, one point there, one point there, one here, one here, and one here, one here, one here. So that now indicates that sort of we have three very large uh, eigenvalues, we have two intermediate, and then we have small ones. And the small ones are typically more or less noise. And if you now have to decide how many dimensions to keep, there would be sort of two positions at which it's worth cutting. So one would be here, where we have the big jump from the third to the fourth eigenvalue, and here from the fifth to the sixth eigenvalue, we have another jump. Uh, so these would be sort of natural points where we'd say, okay, from now on, the components are not essential anymore. So now this is using principal component analysis for dimensionality reduction. I said um, you can also use it for normalization. And that is, for instance, interesting if you're not interested in in the second order moments. I mean, principal component analysis is only based on the second moment matrix, right? which is this matrix here. And these are they only capture statistics of second order. That's also the reason why I just draw an ellipse here, because this method is sort of completely ignorant about any higher order structure in the data. So to principal component analysis, everything looks like a Gaussian, basically. If you're interested in higher order moments, like an independent component analysis, you might want to normalize the distribution such that you eliminate the second order distribution so that you can entirely focus on higher order um, aspects of the data distribution. And that's called whitening. Or sphering.
So if you have a data distribution, like this one here, and you want to whiten it, then you want the distribution to become essentially spherical. And that means you have to normalize this distribution. Maybe you have to compress it a little bit in this direction. and stretch it a little bit in this direction to make this spherical. Yeah? And of course, you can do this in the right way if you know the principal axis and if you have the eigenvalues, so if you know uh, the variances in these directions. In particular, you have to compress this distribution in this direction by 1 over the square root of lambda, which is the eigenvalue, which also has the variance, and in this direction by 1 over uh, the square root of uh, lambda for that direction. And that performs the whitening. So that, in a nutshell, is principal component analysis that can be used for dimensionality reduction or for whitening, so for normalizing away the second order moments of the distribution.